Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena. Apparently the anchorage we're in right now used to be frequented by pirates and I just so happen to have a brand new underwater metal detector on the boat. So uh, who wants to come treasure hunting? I am doubtful that we'll find actual pirate treasure but the anchorage we're in right now is super popular and thousands and thousands of boats come here every year. Maybe one of those cruising boats dropped something interesting overboard. If you're new here, we're Ava and Mess. I spent seven years on a somewhat extensive refit of our 1987 Trident Warrior sailboat named Athena. It was an oh glorious sanding extravaganza. We left Denmark and started cruising full time, sailing down Europe's west coast. And then we had our biggest adventure yet, crossing the Atlantic. Now we're sanding and sailing our way around the world. We're at anchor here in Gorda Sound in the British Virgin Islands. And last night when I was looking at the chart here, I noticed a bunch of dive sites. Athena is anchored over here and this dive site right here in particular tickled my fancy because it's called Jellyfish and Reef Sharks. There are a couple of things I think are appealing about this dive site. For one, it has Reef Shark in the name and Ava's never dived with sharks before so that could make for an interesting first. And also, it's within dinghy distance of where Athena is. This should be a great opportunity for us to try our new little dinghy anchor here, but also to get familiar with our new scuba gear before we start busting out the metal detector. As we mentioned in the beginning of the season, we're now officially Cressy ambassadors, meaning they've sent us a bunch of new super spiffy scuba gear. I am super excited about this little guy here. This is the Digi2. It's an alternative to an analog gauge. This will give you depth, temperature and dive time and also remaining time until you reach 50 bar. Being the slightly paranoid type, when I put together my kit here, I also added one of these super nice little compact Cressy gauges here, just to, as a bit of a backup. Up until now, I've always dived with jacket style BCDs, meaning a BCD where it inflates kind of around your midsection. But this new BCD here is a hybrid BCD, meaning it's kind of an in-between between a jacket style BCD and a wing. So it doesn't have any air here in the sides, but it has a giant bladder here on the back. This is called the Commander Evo, and I'm super excited to see how this is gonna compare to a jacket style BCD. From what I've heard, it should be easier to maintain a more horizontal position in the water when you're diving, but yeah, we'll uh, find out. As far as Mr. Metal Detector here, he is an Excalibur II. Now, he's pretty pricey, but when I was searching for underwater metal detectors, what popped up seemed to be either toys or hyper expensive. So I think this thing kind of represents like a good middle of the road option. Metal detecting is something I've always wanted to get into, but for the last decade, I've been a little bit preoccupied with oh glorious sanding. So yeah, that's why I feel like it's okay to spend a bit of money on the metal detector. First, let's go to the dive site and get familiar with our new equipment. And then when we come back, we can do another dive here in the anchorage and see what Mr. Excalibur can find. We piled all of our scuba gear in the dinghy and tickled Mr. Speed Demon. The primary reason for us getting a 15 horsepower two-stroke outboard was so that we could get on a plane with two people and a mountain of scuba gear. And as long as some of the weight is forward, I'm happy to report there was no problem. Getting to the dive spot did require a few stops to check Navionics to find our way through the maze of reefs. But as soon as we were through the maze, we could speed up and it took only about 15 minutes to get to what at least on the surface looked like a promising location. We picked a nice sandy patch and I tossed our Mantis dinghy anchor overboard. Partly out of curiosity and partly out of paranoia, I jumped in to check the anchor. I was delighted to see the anchor set absolutely perfect in the soft sand. If there was ever a picture perfect example of an anchor setting, this is it. If it can't hold the dinghy set like this, it won't be able to ever. We donned our scuba gear and set out to see what the dive site had to offer. After much swimming above and below the surface, we never really found anything too impressive. With our dive tank still over half full, we headed to a different dive site. When I went to check the anchor, I immediately noticed that it had set in a big pile of dead coral pieces. 
Looking around, it was clear that this place was once amazing, but must have been hit pretty hard, perhaps by a hurricane. There were some signs of life, so we decided to take a closer look. If diving in colder waters has taught me anything, it's to appreciate the beauty of the smaller things. Even though there wasn't much living coral, look at these little guys. And as we were swimming around, I spotted this little protected nook with a bunch of fish hanging out. Not as impressive as a full-blown reef teeming with color, but still beautiful. Heading back, we went a little past the dinghy into deeper water and discovered what can best be described as a conch cemetery. There were hundreds of conch shells all over the bottom. I can't help but wonder if both these dive sites were popular destinations prior to Hurricane Irma hitting the BBIs in 2017. Today's lesson, don't necessarily trust the dive sites in Navionics. Despite our little less than ideal choice of dive spot, we still had a really nice day. And more importantly, we got to test out our scuba gear and our little miniature anchor. This little guy is freaking awesome. And despite us paying a bit of a premium to buy him here in the Caribbean instead of back in the US, I'm glad we got him because I think he's gonna see a lot more action in the Bahamas. Before I can jump in the water and secure our early retirement fund with Mr. Excalibur 2, we do need to top off our scuba tanks. And uh, as you might have noticed, it's a bit of a cloudy day. So unfortunately to be able to do that, we will have to run the engine. Now that we have some juice flowing, let's get to compressing some air. I poked the compressor's air intake out of the hatch in our head and loaded up the first tank. The technical compartment is not really the ideal spot for the dive compressor because it develops quite a lot of heat when it's running, but everything on a small boat is a compromise. With the compressor on and the tank open, it shouldn't take us more than 15 minutes or so to top off each of the tanks. It does get loud inside of the boat with the compressor on, but yesterday we ran the compressor and I asked our friends about the ML Kara that is anchored right next to us and they said they could barely hear the compressor aboard their boat. Reassured that we're not becoming the mortal enemies of everyone in the anchorage, I could focus on filling the tanks. Really, the only thing I need to do is to drain the condensation every 5 to 10 minutes and of course keep an eye on the pressure. With the first tank almost full, you can see why we need to run the engine. 3000 watts is quite a bit of juice. Filling two tanks is a breeze, but for the next boat it would be nice to have a better ventilated space for the dive compressor, perhaps with a little bit better access. I quickly assembled my gear and had Ava hand me the Moneymaker 2000, but unfortunately the water in the anchorage had turned murky. Although the welcoming committee was really nice, I think it's better to wait a day or two. This is an anchorage and even though we did have our dive flag up and I was only planning on being directly below the boat, in case somebody comes in here and they miss the dive flag or they don't know what it means and they attempt to pull off a French anchoring, I would like to have just a little bit more visibility so I can see what's going on. By a French anchoring, I'm referring to something we've experienced on multiple occasions this year where we're in an anchorage where there is tons of room and then a boat shows up and it's always a French boat and they proceed to anchor so close to you that you can count the number of gray hairs in the captain's beard. I guess the French are just used to anchoring in super close quarters, but yeah, it can be a little bit scary. Anywho, while we're waiting for the water to get a little bit less murky, there's a little mini project I can take care of. Way back when we were in France, I made this anchor snubber bridle doohickey here, and it's based around this mantis chain claw here. Now every component in this anchor bridle here is dimensioned so that it's as strong as our chain, anchor and swivel. I think I did a pretty good job with this thing. There's a bit of anti-chafe on there and it's, it's, yeah, it's a really nice bridle but it's way overkill for 99.9999% of the anchoring we do. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but Athena is a little bit cramped in the pointy end here. There's the fur legs and the pulpit, which makes access a little bit difficult. When you put the chain claw on, you slide it onto the chain and then you have to strap this buckle here onto over here, which doing it right here is super easy, but doing it on the outside, of the head stay here, it's very cramped and awkward. And then when you pull the chain up, you have to undo that, that's awkward. And then to get the chain claw off, you kind of have to do like a bit of a jiggle, which again is 
super difficult out there. I think what we need is a uh, light weather bridle or snubber of sorts. We could go with something super simple like what we have here, which is just a line that's tied to the chain with a rolling hitch. The downside to those is once that's been loaded, then getting that knot untied can be a little bit annoying. I have two different designs for this new snubber in mind. One is based around one of these Witchard chain grabby thingies here, which just slide on there real easy and slide off real easy. Of course, this little flimsy thing is not going to be anywhere near as strong as the big honker skunk here from Mantis. But for our light weather bridle, I don't think it matters. As I mentioned, every part of this bridle here is as strong as the breaking strain of our chain. But uh, this little guy, I think he's about half the strength. When we were in St. Martin, I picked up some of this eight strand here, which should have a similar breaking strength to the little chain hooky guy. The goal for this bridle is to be our everyday bridle. So for good weather anchoring, in case we need to anchor in bad weather, well, then we'll bust out the old bridle. Instead of having this new guy be a bridle, meaning two legs going out to the chain hooky thingy here, we could just have it be a single line but with the way Athena is set up, it's really hard to get a fair lead on that one single line. So that's why I'm sticking with the bridle. We could easily forgo the thimble and the shackle here, but by adding those, it's gonna be a lot easier to replace this guy in case we ever need to. And putting one of these into eight strand is super easy. Just in case you're not familiar with eight strand, it's this stuff, which oddly enough consists of eight strands, whereas for instance, three strands would have three strands. One of the things I really like about this stuff is that it is super nice and soft and flexible. I found the middle of the eight strand rope and used the thimble to tell me where to start. Securing the thimble is as easy as running each of the ends through the center of each of the line, meaning in between the four strands on each side. The end result should look something like this. That was about it for the easy part. I very rarely splice eight strand, so every time I need to do it, I need to look up how to do it and relearn all over again. It's not hard to do, but it requires a bit of patience. The very last step was to add some seizing wire to the shackle so it won't accidentally come undone. Ta-da! One anchor bridle snubber doohickey. Now, if I've gotten the length of this correct, then this should be short enough that it never actually goes into the water. In terms of size and weight, the light weather one is definitely much more handy. Let's get the uh, rolling hitch off of the chain. Just in case you're not familiar with why we add a snubber to the chain, it's to take any shock loads from the boat yanking on the anchor and the chain off of the windlass and put that onto the cleats instead. There are some additional pluses if you're talking about anchoring in extreme conditions where it's good to get some of the stretch nylon can provide into your anchor road. But yeah, for just everyday use, it's simply just to get any shock loads off of the windlass. All we need to do is to slide this little guy on there, poke the eye to here and get it onto the cleat. Then we can let the chain out and get the load onto the snubber. It looks like I got the length basically spot on. The reason I care about the length is because this guy is much longer because he's designed for anchoring in more extreme conditions. But that also means that when you're using it, about half the length of it is sitting in the water. And that means if you're sitting somewhere using this for a few days, then you get a bunch of yucky growth on it. So for our light weather snapper, I figured it would be nice if it didn't have that annoying feature. The water didn't seem like it was ever going to clear up, so I figured the next best thing would be to load up the dinghy and head closer to shore. Having read the manual multiple times, but still never actually used the metal detector before, I thought it might be a good idea to bring a couple of coins, just to get Mr. Moneymaker on the scent and get him all fired up. The good news is, he works, but apparently he misread the scent of the coins because he immediately went on to find me this piece of trash. Searching in the shallow water with a moderate wave action is not super easy, but at least I was rewarded with yet another piece of trash. This one had a bunch of growth on it, so in the spirit of not making any little critters homeless, I left it in place exactly where I found it. 
I got some interesting sounding signals, but it quickly became apparent that I need to remember to bring gloves to not mess up my fingers. Lesson learned. I continued eagerly searching for our sure to be soon located retirement fund, but surprisingly no gold or silver came jumping out at me. Clearly I haven't mastered the settings on Mr. Moneymaker yet. While no contributions were made to the retirement fund today, I still had a lot of fun with Mr. Moneymaker here. Now I think that next time I'm gonna go out, I'll maybe bring a little piece of gold and a little piece of silver to see if I can get him to avoid some of the trash I found today. I know the metal detector is a little bit off brand for a sailing channel or a boat refit channel, but I think bringing it to areas like here where a lot of people have been before us could be a lot of fun. See what we can find, maybe some 10 millimeter sockets or a big bag of Krugerrands straight out of an 80s action movie. If nothing else, I've heard that variety is the spice of life and uh, if we manage to find a new project boat in the US this summer, it'd be nice to have something to do in life other than O oh, Glorious Sanding. I managed to get a little cut on my foot a couple of days ago and uh, I think to give that a chance to heal I should avoid the water activities next week. But uh, that's okay, we have other stuff to keep us entertained next week because well, Ava's leaving the boat so we have to drop her off at the airport and uh, well, that means I'm free to get up to all kinds of trouble. I've got some fun projects planned and of course also it is time for me to start my ABYC course and certification process, which I am very excited about. Ava's busy getting the last few things sorted before she leaves for, well, I think you're going to be gone for a month, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So we'll uh, let her take care of that. And uh, yeah, that's going to be the end of this week's video. We hope to see all you guys back here at Athena next week for some O oh, Glorious Alone Time with Matt. Better behave. <laughs> oh, there will be dust everywhere. <laughs> okay. See you! You're so excited to get rid of me, you forgot the entire ending! Whoopsies! <laughs> and as always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please, please remember... remember. <laughs> I say please remember. <laughs> Wait, I say please remember. Please remember to leave a like. See, See you! you. <laughs> Have fun without me! <laughs>